This conversation is taking place at the DuPont Environmental Center in the Russell W. Peterson Wildlife Refuge. We're at the DuPont uh, Environmental Education Center on the riverfront in Wilmington talking with uh, Dory Jacobson. Tell people why, why you're moving on now. There is a, um, there's a point at which when something pulls you from the inside to go do something new, and that is what I have done my entire life, you have to respond to that. I have uh, set up or run or created four different causes or organizations in my life. Eight years with the Rodell Foundation has been unbelievably gratifying. What's your biggest success? I think keeping the issue alive in the public eye, um, and I say that not just in Delaware, to ensure that people understand that our schools must be better, that they have the capacity to be better, and that every child has the opportunity and should have the opportunity to excel. And then at the national level, to position Delaware as a state that really is a leader, um, very much so, and to uh, share our successes and learn from other states. Um, so that's been principally my responsibilities. And, uh, you know, with Race to the Top success and a couple of others, I guess, uh, you know, that's a pretty good notch on, 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 on your... Uh, on Delaware's. On, your belt, on Delaware's. On belt. Delaware's well, belt. And, and, and to a large extent, the Rodell Foundation. Um, as I've said publicly and, and privately, without, without Rodell, it wouldn't have happened. And I think, I think that's true. Um, do you think I'm right? I know you're right. I do know that. But we have served as the catalyst for a coalition. And we have been the ones who have helped provide a lot of the very mundane kind of work, a lot of research, best practice, um, information, staffing, investments. It has been the coalition, though, that really started with Vision 2015 that really can take the credit for this. There is no question about it. It was public, private, civic. Um, people worked very hard. You were part of this group, as you know, very hard for a year, really sorting through what could be done in our school system, looking at best practices from around the world and obviously best practices here in Delaware. Um, we provided the glue. We were a catalyst and continue to be, um, but without all of the resources, attention, time, energy, blood, sweat, tears, uh, this would not have happened. Uh, recently, there was some, some good news. The, yes. the test scores yep. uh, this year uh, showed marked improvement in a number of areas. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. And, and, I, and, and what I, do you think it means? Um, well, I think the flywheel is turning. I really believe that. Um, there have been a lot of systemic changes over the last couple of years that have taken a lot of time and attention, regulatory, legislative, just system changes. And I think in that process of time, people have been saying, when is it going to hit the classroom? Well, this does take time, and we have just seen it. Between nine and 10,000 students have um, increased their scores enormously in both math and in reading. And it's the first time we have seen this really at the classroom level. Um, and it can be tracked now because we have a dif different sort of assessment system that allows teachers to figure out where their students are learning, where their students are having problem, and they can really, really dig in and help those children. Um, my concern all along has been is the sustainability yes. of, of the stuff that we've tried to do. Right. I mean, do you think this is evidence that <clears throat> there is some sustainability now? That's a, that's a complicated question, and I think the answer is yes. Sustainability comes from a lot of different things. It comes from belief, and I think now we have some belief that children really can, uh, can learn more, can learn faster, that these reforms are starting to kick in. When that belief kicks in, people will, there is momentum there. Uh, sustainability also comes with changing the actual systems of education. So the DPAS, which is the teacher evaluation system, is getting worked through right now with great input from the teachers. That will be a system that is embedded. We've just seen DCAS, the uh, student testing system, changed. That now is embedded. So in terms of sustainability, when you can really modernize those systems, a lot of good things can happen. One of the areas that <coughs> we, we never been able to really get our hands around, I don't think, um, is what happens when the kid leaves school at 3 yes. o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, how do, does learning get reinforced outside the classroom? 
uh, and can it really be sustainable over the long haul without that kind of reinforcement? Sure, and that comes to a couple things, one of which is partnerships, whether or not that is with boys and girls clubs or it is with the business community providing after school internships, that's very important. The role of parents is absolutely critical to reinforce what those children um, read and hear and learn during the day. After school programs, essential, longer school day, and programming in the summer. We know that for um, a lot of our highest needs children, uh, when they are out of school for two or two and a half months in the summer, there is a period of great you know, lapse of, of what they are retaining. And I think we have to look at all of that. Who are the, the strategic partners that, that you've solicited nationally uh, over the last seven years? Who are these people and who's come to Delaware because you, know, you made some contact with them? Sure, um, quite a number, some of which are nonprofit organizations uh, versed in education. There is an organization, Mass Insight, that we have been working with for the last several years on partnership zone turnaround concepts. Uh, very well respected. Um, we have been working with Achieve, which runs the America Diploma Project. Um, we have tried to get um, some charter organizations that are very high performing here. Um, such as KIPP and such as uh, Yes Prep, we have been less successful with those because I think some of our charter laws are need to be modernized, let's put it that way. Um, and philanthropically, uh, the Gates Foundation has been very supportive. They've done uh, grants with the NGA to support work in Delaware. Um, the Broad Foundation, of course, was a very early investor in the development of Vision 2015. Um, through the race to the top and the early learning challenge, we are very networked into what is happening. We are sharing lessons with other states. We are learning from them. So it's a very vital place for Delaware to be. Um, I, I know you work hard. Uh, I've worked with you. Uh, what do you do when, for fun? Oh, um, what, well, what, what turns story <laughs> on outside of the workplace? Uh, we've just we've just got new kayaks. Uh, we do so we do a lot of hiking and kayaking. I do a lot of gardening. Um, I do a lot of reading. Um, I just I enjoy life. And I was chatting with someone the other day who asked what I wanted to do uh, for the rest of my life, and I said I want to find joy every day, and I want to be wowed by something. And that's where I am going, honestly. And I am too busy, you know me well. I am too intellectually sort of curious about things. Um, so there's, there's no R word in this. This is just sort of a, uh, a time to prune a few roots and set out some new sprouts. Thanks, Dory. You're welcome. You're connected with Content Delaware.